How was everybody's Christmas? It Good. Was nice. Good. And did you do you feel like you followed through with your plan or you know overall had a good mental mindset over it? I think I think I did. I think for me, um, I definitely stuck to my water and I didn't give any pity treats, if that makes any sense. Yeah. I didn't just eat, I made my treats count. Good. How are your cookies? Delicious. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, I get nothing. We have so again? many leftover biscochos. Biscochos, that's right. We have so hey. many leftover, they're still ling lingering around. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> Let's go get out of here. Raquel has a cookie lady that comes around once a year, May. <laughs> Makes these special cookies. <laughs> I had it written down like on a post-it in the office from last week. And my husband's like, Biscocha, Biscocha. What do you need this piece of paper? I was like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> I'm going to get me some of those someday. Oh, wait, Marlena's having trouble connecting. Yes, we are here. Where did you guys connect from? We used to be, uh, we were childhood neighbors. No, I mean, onto this Zoom call. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I get it. <laughs> it totally sounded like that. <laughs> Not that I don't care. <laughs> uh, I got the text. They gave, I, I clicked the link for the text message. Is that what you did, May? Mm -hmm. Um, maybe she. Maybe that's what she can do. I. I don't want to say. I mean, I stuck to my plan. Luckily, not luckily. Okay, that was a wrong choice of words. Two of my sisters. One was ex. One her family was exposed to COVID, and the other one. Her, her boyfriend had COVID, so they didn't come. Um, one of those being the big treat makers oh. and hors d'oeuvres and all the things. And so we actually didn't have that much, which was nice because we don't usually need that much. Um, all we had was like a couple pies. I made some Rice Krispie treats and that was it. And that was like perfect because it wasn't like, you know, sometimes I just eat because it's there. And so it felt kind of good to be like, I didn't have a piece of the apple pie because I don't really care about apple pie very much. I did have 10 Rice Krispie treats, but I was okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> it just feels kind of good just to like have a choice. So what I wanted to talk about tonight was, okay, yay, we had the holiday, we had Thanksgiving, we had Christmas, all the things, all the fun, right? What are we doing this week, food wise, nutritionally wise, to like just fall right back into Fit Me, fall back into our habits um, so that we can be successful? I know that dinner is never my issue. So I've already kind of, from the prompts from the past few weeks, um, I've already figured out that dinner is not my issue. I cook almost every single night. I like to, I cook for my family. So that's never an issue. Um, it's the other meals that are issues. So that is why right now I have, I already cooked a huge thing of chicken thighs in the Instapot, a huge thing of broccoli and a big thing of rice. And that gets me through until for breakfast and lunch. And then tomorrow night I'll cook a new protein. So my rotation kind of is, is boring for the first day, but then the new protein comes out every night for dinner. And so as long as I, I already went shopping, I went to Costco, got all my protein, all the things. And so my fridge is full and ready just to be cooked. And if I don't have that, I'm not getting back on track. I'm going into the pantry and getting the Rice Krispie treats. So I know that about myself. So that is what I'm doing to just kind of fall back in line. So that's what I thought we would talk about. If you don't know what you're doing, if you need help, what you're doing, let's make a plan right now, but let's all walk away from this call, like with a plan to be successful 
to successfully kind of end our holiday season and fun. Does that make sense? Not fun, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, else it could just linger on and on and on for months and months. So that's what I want to hear from you ladies. Like what's, what's the plan? What's the foundation made out of? What kind of foods? <laughs> I'll go first. Um, so I did the grocery shopping and I wasn't going to prep the food, but um, I know that if I don't have cooked protein in the fridge, then I'm not going to, I'm going to choose something different. Mm -hmm. um, so the difference this week is that I'm not working. And so what I normally would do is we would have dinner. My husband would cook dinner and then I would make a couple of fit me plates for my lunches for the next couple of days. And this week that didn't happen. Even though I made the food, I didn't make like the individual lunches. And so today for lunch, I just kind of poked around the fridge and ended up making a quesadilla and that was lunch. So I didn't have a fit plate for lunch. Um, and tomorrow, if I don't go tonight and make me something that's prepared for lunch tomorrow, I'll probably do the same thing. So my plan is to go into the kitchen after this call and make a couple of plates. Because if I don't do that, I already know that mm -hmm. I'll be eating a grilled cheese sandwich or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> a bagel with cream cheese or something <laughs> like that. So I need to go and make the stupid plates. <laughs> it's funny how like it's all in there, but if it's not organized, it just seems like, ah, oh, what am I having? I don't know, quesadilla. Like that's <laughs> so true. That happens to me also. Yeah. So good. Good realization because I never put it together like that. But yeah. Like my lunch tomorrow. Because being home just gives a different dynamic, I feel like. I feel yeah. like it kind of, my brain, you know, tells myself that, that little voice tells myself like, oh, you don't need a prep. You'll be home. Like, who cares? You know, you could cook food if you wanted to. But then the time comes and I'm like, shit, I don't want to cook anything. Or I just do the same thing. So I love that realization. Love it. Yeah. Rick and I were just talking, my husband and I were just talking for dinner. He made, um, he made pork chops, um, for dinner tonight. And he's like, you always want to make me, you always want to put me to work out, you know, after he's worked all day, he will come home and he have, throws them on the grill. And so I was telling him, I was like, why don't we just prep our, our protein on Sundays? If I start buying, you know, our, our pork chops, our chicken, whatever, you know, if, whatever we want and we just grill it on Sunday then we have meals at least for, we have protein for three days mm -hmm. and then on Thursday I can do we can do a crock pot you know and we make enough to have leftovers for lunch and he's like you just want me to work and I was like well then maybe I need to learn how to grill because because <laughs> we need to figure something out because like last night um yesterday for dinner we ended up having uh Salisbury steaks frozen Salisbury steaks because it was his dinner night and he didn't want to throw anything on and I you know like I don't it's not it's it's not a bad thing to you know a, it's a quick thing but I'd rather have a fresh pork chop with green beans and potato you know <laughs> totally so, um because the flaw in our plans always is like human error, right? We get lazy, we get tired. We tell ourselves yeah. like why we don't want to do it, even though we've already said, this is the plan, we're going to do it. Um, and so I love that idea. My family will not eat leftover meat. There. I'm not a big fan of it either. <laughs> if it's but over, it, it's got to be cooked that night. <laughs> yes. So it, like, I can't do egg bakes. I, I don't like egg bakes. If So I've been getting up and making my eggs after I work out in the mornings because I, I do not like egg bakes. No, so I, I, I feel you. But it's all about kind of finding the, the compromise that feels doable and simpler 
versus right. like the one that's always going to be work because we always know we're going to be tired. We're going to be busy. We're going to be something. And so if we, if it always is something that we feel like is going to be work, we're going to throw it aside really quickly. So even if you have to compromise three nights a week, like not having like that night, um, cooked meat, if you can do that, you know, that you'll like, that's your preparation for being successful. Yeah. And I'm okay with eating cold meat. It's reheating it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm like, it's not the same. And I can prep food ahead of time for myself and make plates and I'm okay with it. My husband won't eat the plates. Um, my daughter started grabbing some of the plates so I make some for her. Um, but with leftovers in the fridge, they won't, they won't touch the leftovers. So it's like I, we cook the dinner with a little bit extra for me to make my two lunches for the week or whatever it comes out to be, two or three lunches for the week. But nobody will eat them but me. They want fresh food like every day and I don't get it but well, good for you because I have one kid that will eat leftovers and when I go in there and it's not there I want to wring his damn neck I'm like where's my chicken <laughs> <laughs> where is he I'm gonna cut him <laughs> like, that makes me more angry <sighs> May how is your Christmas do you what's your plan um what with food uh, I cut, I'm a little bit frustrated today because, well, we're snowed and colded and iced in kind of at the moment, which is unusual for here, but we ended up getting enough in the snow and then it dropped down into the teens. And so they cannot drive here mm -hmm. at all because they don't do the roads at all. And it's a mess. Anyway, Monday, I was very proud of myself and cooked up a couple of big pots of um, food and even put some in the freezer and had some more and I was all set and then um, I had like a massive celiac attack that night and then I had another one this morning so um, something I made and I've checked all the labels and everything and it's, I'm frustrated because it's going to waste a lot of food. Second of all, I don't know what triggered it and I can't eat right now. So, I mean, all I've had today were two eggs and that's it because I can't eat when my intestines get like this. So you're, I'm, you're I'm, more true celiac than like just gluten intolerant, correct? No, I have celiac. Yeah. Okay. I thought so. But everything I used was, um, you know, I made like the supposed orange chicken, you know, like a fake version. And the two sauces I put in, gluten-free, gluten-free. I can't think of anything that would have caused it. Unless I have a stomach bug, but it doesn't feel like that. It feels like, like, um, a celiac just feels different when that happens. It just behaves differently. So anyway, I was a little frustrated and, um have to figure out where I'm going to go next with that. Do you have, yeah. do you have groceries? I have enough to get by for a couple more days. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm a prepper, so I have stuff. <laughs> I mean, no, I'm serious. <laughs> I could feed, you know, a hundred people for yeah, a week. You'll probably. figure out how to do some like gluten-free stone soup. <laughs> I have, you know, and I, I think that's the one thing that that's the one, I'm glad you said that because the soup base I use, I've always used it before. And I'm wondering now if maybe they've changed something in it. I need to check. I use it better than bouillon, mm -hmm. which is really delicious. But yeah, Everybody loves that one. Yeah. Now their beef one, I know I can't use. I can use the organic beef one. I don't know why. It's just, I mean, the celiac sites say that but um yeah I don't know so I'm just a little bit eh, 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 at the moment I have some I'm not going to eat today anymore um but I did 
make up a whole big pitcher of tangerine water. So. <laughs> You'll be hydrated. Your vitamin so, C. Yeah. I mean, I just, I like water and I just squish a couple tangerines in it and it, oh. it's tasty. How long does your, like, does like a celiac flare up usually last? Um, usually it's cause specific. Mm-hmm. I mean, basically I feel it's like until everything works its way out of my system. Mm-hmm. So, you know, 24 hours or so, but for this to happen two days in a row is a little bit suspicious. So either the first attack was worse and I did eat, I, I did two fit me plates yesterday, despite it. I mean, one was just eggs and rice and a cucumber on the side. And the other one was a tiny piece of steak and potatoes and cucumber. I'm addicted to cucumbers. (laughs) Could be worse. I guess the other thing is I really haven't been able to eat much for the last week or eat correctly. Let me put it that way. Uh, Because I had a tooth break off at the gum Mm. and they had to go in and take it out. So eating my normal steak and stuff that I normally eat was not happening well full of excuses well i know i was just gonna say <laughs> i was just gonna say it's okay as soon That's as what, you're feeling better i made the food so i could eat it with the damn mouth and then <laughs> it screws up my intestines it's like gee many christmas yeah. Give me <laughs> well what i was gonna say as soon as you're like feeling better possibly tomorrow you just gotta Pull your big girl panties on and make something else. Yeah, I will. I will. I know, but just not feeling good, especially I can only imagine, even just if I have like a gassy, twisted stomach, I want to do nothing. Like I don't feel good. I, nothing sounds good. I just want the pain to go away. So I could totally understand the frustration. No, it was just stupid because I got up at five this morning with it. And then about seven, I fell back asleep and slept until noon. I don't do that. So obviously something was amiss. Well, you needed it. Yeah. I think I'm just a, look at this hair. This is what I need to get fixed. (laughs) Um, uh, This is just from the shower. That's why it looks like that. Uh, I would like to try some, my cooking has been disastrous lately. Everything that I've tried to make has just tasted I mean, it's just come out terrible. So I need to figure some different things out. Have you been trying new recipes that are, you know, like, like orange chicken's a pretty specific recipe. Like I don't cook like that very often. I just cook like a throw things in kind of cook. So have you been like trying specific recipes that haven't been coming out you versus yeah, like just a couple things like that. And I mean, to be honest, the celiac thing could have also been triggered by guar gum. Mm-hmm. Cause you know, cause they put that in, in quote, gluten-free baked goods mm-hmm. and that stuff can tear you up. That happens to Terry. Yeah. I mean, it really can. So, um, normally I just cook, honestly, 50% of the time I eat a steak and either a couple of, you know, two or three of the little potatoes and cucumber, broccoli, asparagus. That's my main go-to meal. No, I like it. That sounds delicious, actually. Yeah. And I mean, I just get these little steaks and and, I mean, they're real steaks, but they're little and it's like the perfect meal because, uh, um, because of the celiac, my iron, I'm, I'm bottomed out right now, Mm -hmm. um, for hemoglobin. So I've got to get that up too. Anyway, I've talked enough as somebody else's turn. Well, what I, kind of took away from what May was saying was just like just keeping it simple um because simple is easy like when I make a recipe and it doesn't come out and once in a while I do that and my husband will be like you know you're you're pretty good but once in a while it doesn't turn out and then it's like my leftovers are gone I'm you know bummed out like the food's like wasted (laughs) and so I'm like okay I'm just going back to simple keep it simple because I can do simple on a regular consistent basis and that's kind of like fit me in a nutshell, right? Um, so Isla, we were kind of talking about, hi Isla. <laughs> we were kind of talking about what our plan is if we have a plan in place to kind of like 
just move on from the holiday season and be back into our normal foundation, our normal life and our kind of normal routine. Um, I think it's important thought to think about. So it kind of sounds like everybody has a plan. May's going to have a plan as soon as she's. Going. No, I, th I think the safest thing is a meat, um, potatoes, mm -hmm. you know, meat, rice, potatoes, and a vegetable yep. and get recipes for a while. Cause obviously something tricked me. Yeah. And I'm pretty careful, but it tricked me. Um, Instead of recipes sometimes, and you have to be careful with this, make sure they're gluten-free, but I just love getting a bunch of different kind of spices. Like I always just get, I'm a, like Lauren, Lauren always says she doesn't get blends. I get blends all the time. Like they're my favorite. Um, I feel like they're easier. They're, they're what they're supposed to be. I don't got to like guess them. <laughs> and so it feels like, it feels like a new recipe every time I'm making the same protein. You know what I mean? Like I got this, I really love Kinders. I don't know if you guys have ever used Kinders. Um, mm -hmm. They have it at Costco. That's why mostly I get it, <laughs> but I do like it. Um, they have like a Santa Maria. They have like lime tequila. They have like buttered steak. They have all these different kinds of spices. And so I feel like I can keep things interesting with the exact same food, just different spice. And then, but my family even is like, oh, is this new? I like this. This is really good. I'm like, oh, it's actually the same as always. <laughs> different spice. So, um, changing it up with the spice is like a blend. What's the, that brand name? Kinders, K I N D E R S. They have so much stuff. Um, yeah, I like them. I like it. I'll look it up. Okay. Yeah, we need a Costco here. <laughs> Do you guys yeah. have Costco in no. Costco? We have Sam's. No. Mm -hmm. We don't have Costco. I think they might have one in El Paso, but we don't like to go there. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> Costco is a, a saving grace when you're buying food to, to prep food. It's like, there's things that I refuse to buy in the grocery store. Cause I know what the price of the grocery store is. And I know what the price of Costco is. And I'm like, people, my people will be like, did you get, I'm like, nope, because I didn't go to Costco and I refuse to pay, <laughs> <laughs> refuse to pay grocery store prices. Um, but it, it really is. I don't really know Sam's club. We don't have that here. I assume it's kind of the same. Yeah. And it's, not really. Yeah. <laughs> Yours sounds fabulous. Ours sounds, eh. <laughs> yeah. I get Costco has more food. Yeah, it does. Yeah. It does. I know you can get some things online at Costco, even if you're not a member. But um, but the good stuff, like the good food, of course, we wouldn't be able to. Yeah, I'm sure there's a Costco coming near you anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they're another corporation that's really boomed with the COVID. <laughs> so, okay. Does everybody feel good about what they're doing? And let's not forget, we are also remembering if we need to shop at the end of the week for our weekend, that we are also doing that because we're back on track. We're not going to any more parties. We're not, well, maybe a New Year's Eve party, but we're not going to any more parties. We are just falling back in line with the habits that may have been kind of abandoned, not abandoned, but you know, we've been off schedule, I feel like, especially for the past two weeks. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't take long for, for me to like abandon a habit. Like, oh, I have a, I'm just taking a break from it. And all of a sudden I never see it again. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> what were those habits again? Exactly. <laughs> what kind of habits? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we're so quick to replace the good habits with like, mm -hmm. maybe I do need popcorn every single day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah to me today I was like I'm just gonna have one handful of caramel popcorn and then at the end of the day I'm like no stop this stop it <laughs> one handful after another <laughs> yeah <laughs> my mo is to slice a teeny sliver off a cake like if there's we have like a birthday cake to slice one teeny little slice a thousand times <laughs> like, <laughs> 
Yep. And also the other thing that kind of goes along with this is like just going through our pantry and seeing like what kind of extra accumulated treats we have in there um, that we don't usually have in there that we don't need any more of. I know that I went shopping with my husband. We went, we and him went like on an overnight trip to the lake and I went shopping with him and he shops so differently than I do that we had chocolate dipped coconut rolls. We had cinnamon dipped coconut rolls. We had little sugar cookies. We had, I mean, I'm telling you, it was like, and it's, I'm just not used to shopping like that. And so I literally went through the pantry and I was like, that's it. We're done. <laughs> when I was in Maryland, he bought a slice, he went shopping, he bought a slice of cake and my daughter saw, he bought a slice of cake, like just a slice of cake. So weird. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> he has been paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> obviously there's nothing wrong with like a cake I think that's like the really cool thing about I mean we were joking about the habits disappearing but I don't think I realized how embedded it was in me until I stayed with some friends in October in Maryland and I don't want to say every meal was like a battle but it was like every meal was like a battle mm -hmm. you know just because where's my fit me plate you know what are you talking about you're making this <laughs> These, these gluten-free scones for breakfast. That is not breakfast. That is not breakfast. So, yeah, I think I think we do get, and when you've been doing it a while, then it does kind of seem like, yeah, 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 yeah. But it is there. It's hard to, uh, hard to get it out of your brain once it's in there. I do. I totally do agree. And I don't know why, like, we, we've been talking about Fit Me Plates in Fit Me Forever, even before, like, the actual term of a fit me plate came along, but now I say fit me plate all the time. My husband says fit me plate all the time. Like, and it just is so normal sounding to have like what a fit me plate is that when other people have no clue, I'm like, Oh my God, how do you not know this? <laughs> like, <laughs> It is funny, isn't it? When you, when you yeah. what was one of the meals they made? They made, um, pizza, I think, and grits. I mean, it was just, it was like <laughs> carb. Heaven. I it know was pancakes and it was something like that was like either one of them would have been the biggest carb load on the face of the earth, and to serve two of them with nothing else, it was like, yeah, I know <laughs> this is not what we want to eat, folks. Not everybody knows about vegetables, and it's I feel like really lucky that we like practice this. I know like it doesn't matter how long we've been in fit me. We're always going back to like water, fit me plates, all the things. And it's like, I'm so glad that we practice that because it is ingrained. It is like ingrained literally. And that's awesome. That's like awesome. That's like us treating our bodies well for a long time. That's cool. It's very cool. Yeah. I noticed yeah. my mom, she kind of, she knows I do fit me plates. And so she's been kind of thinking about putting the vegetable and the carb and the protein on the plate. She might have two carbs, but <laughs> yeah, it's, it's baby steps. But it got a vegetable on there as well. And she makes dinner for all of us, you know, she'll make sure that she has a vegetable included. So that's kind of nice. It is. It's cool. It's cool. It's like the trickle down. Breakfast is the only thing that they're just not used to it. And so I would just throw spinach on the plate and then put everything that they made on top of that. <laughs> and my brother-in-law even asked me, he's like, do you think I can grab a little bit of your spinach? <laughs> That's, like, cool. no, only cool. <laughs> That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. I yeah. grew up, I grew up in the days when if you were serving something green at dinner, it was green jello. <laughs> I made green jello for Christmas. <laughs> so don't, don't you dare tell me it had fruit in it. Don't you dare tell me. Or that, whipped cream. As long as it's not food group. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay, ladies. Good talk. It sounds like everybody's like grasping the fact that we are moving on from the holidays. And that's a big deal because I feel like, you know, I haven't always done that. And, and so it's kind of a neat feeling that I just, you know, that we can just kind of go through the holidays, be off, off our schedule a little bit, be cool with it, not be a wreck, not gain any weight, not like, not all the things and then be like, okay, it's over. Let's, let's move on. So I just think that's really super cool. 
super cool. Okie dokie. So I will see you ladies next week. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs>